Hello and welcome to another video. Now I have eight questions behind me that I'm going to use to explain this concept and I'm just going to answer them and in the process of answering the questions you'll fully uh, get uh, a good grip of how to answer questions like this when it has to do with absolute values and inequalities. Okay now before we continue take the time right now and go hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the like button for this video also and turn on the notifications okay um before i go on also can you try these questions just see how well you can do just imagine what your answers are supposed to be for each of the eight questions like i said the answers are quick if you understand what absolute value actually means and what inequalities actually mean so it's a combination of two different concepts but when we merge them together we get smarter let's get into the video so let's recall something remember that the absolute value of say 3 is equal to 3 because whatever comes out of here has to be positive and also the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So absolute value just simply means we're trying to find how many steps or how far you have to move away from 0 to get to that number. So you notice that on the number line we have to always see absolute value as the number line so you have this to be 0. How many steps will you take to get to 3 from 0? Well you take 3 steps if we're moving in units. And how many steps will it take to get to negative 3 if you start from 0? Well, 1, 2, 3. So every time something is inside the absolute value function, um, you're just saying that how far do I have to move away from 0? That's the meaning of absolute value. How far do I have to move away from 0? And whatever happens, you have to take steps. So there are two options. It's either you don't move at all or you get a certain number of steps. Now remember, the number of steps you take cannot be negative. So whatever comes out of this must always be positive. You can't take negative steps. See, because for absolute value, we're just talking about how many steps you move in either direction, whether to the right, to the right, or to the left. Okay, so that's how that works. So we're gonna go and take each of these with that understanding and see what our answers are supposed to be. So let's start with the first one. So the first question is this one. It says that the absolute value of one minus two x over five is greater than or equal to zero. We want to know what x would be. Now this is how I want you to read it. What comes out of the absolute value function, the result of this is either a positive number or it's zero. So it's either you did not take any step, which is zero, or you actually took some steps. Now, if you took some steps, they must be positive because there are no negative steps. Okay, so um, it's saying find x if what comes out of here is zero or is positive or positive. Those are the two conditions. So let's now read it set differently and say zero is greater than or equal to zero. At least we have this portion true. Anything positive is greater than or equal to zero. That portion also is true. So it looks like this set statement is always true because zero is part of this. Positive is greater than zero. So we can say whatever the value of x you plug in here, what comes out of it is either zero or greater than zero, which means positive. So what is the solution? Any number would work, any real number. So we can say that the solution set, set for this is all reals, so okay? We can say that the solution set x is equal to all reals. That's the solution to this one. All real numbers will satisfy that. Let's go to the next one, number two. Let's read it just the way we read this one. It's either whatever comes out of this is zero or it is positive, so we write again, zero or positive. Now ask yourself, can a number 
be zero and less than zero? No, you can't combine those two. That's contradictory. Can a number be positive and still less than zero? No. So it doesn't matter what number you pick, you will never get a solution to this because of the way it is. Because whatever comes out of this must be zero or must be positive. And neither of these two can be less than zero. So the solution here is no solution. It's a null set, okay? No solution. Or you can write it as like this. It's an empty set, okay? There's no answer to that. You see how quickly you can answer these questions? Let's go to the number, th the, the third one. Whatever comes out of here is either zero or we do the same thing. It's either zero or positive. So let's write it. So we say it's going to be zero or it's going to be positive. Two options. Now let's look at what we have. We're looking for the portion that is greater than zero. So it cannot be zero but it must be greater than zero, okay? It cannot be zero, but it must be greater than zero. So we're just looking for, and, but that's true. Whatever comes out of this, okay, must be great, strictly greater than zero, so it cannot be zero. So the only thing that, give, that will give us any trouble right now, because if this was not there, then any value of x will satisfy this condition that it is positive because it's supposed to be positive. But it's also possible that this is zero. But we don't want that part that's zero because what we want is what is strictly greater than zero. So the domain of this function will be all values of x, except the value of x that's gonna make this zero. And why will this be zero? Well, you know that a rational function is zero if the numerator is zero. So that's the only thing we must avoid. Okay, so we just say that one minus two x is not equal to zero because that's, that's the only thing that is, we must recognize that we cannot have a zero inside because we don't want a zero. See, it would work here, but it will not work here because we don't want a zero. So what will make this expression a zero? Well, if we isolate x, we know that x is not equal to one half. So that's the solution. X can be anything else except one half. And this will be true. So X can be one or two or three or zero or five or negative seven, whatever. It will always be true. The only time this will not be true is if X equals one half, because that's when this other condition will be true. Remember, there's always two, there are always two conditions in absolute value functions. It's either what's inside will come out as a zero or as a positive, but we want just the positive. We don't want the zero. So we have to avoid the number that gives us a zero. And that number for a rational function occurs when the numerator is zero. So, and that's it. X is not equal to one half. That's the solution. Okay, let's go to number four. So if you want to write this in interval notation, you can say all numbers from negative infinity all the way to one half, just before one half is good. But you have to skip this number because that's the number we don't want. So we say union. We start again from one half to positive infinity. That's how we write the solution if you want to use interval notation. Or you just say x is not equal to one half because that's the number we skipped here. Okay, now let's go to number four. The same thing for number four. You have one minus two x absolute value of five is less than or equal to zero. Remember that this means you're going to get a zero or you're going to get a positive. Now, can a zero be less than or equal to zero? Yes. You see, a zero can be less than or equal to the equal to portion allows us to use this zero. So it's possible that what you have here is zero. But can a positive be less than or equal to zero? No. So this portion does not work. Only this portion is right. So we're just looking for the, what will make this true. And this is only true when what is inside is zero. So what will make this zero? We already solved it here. Now we need that in this case. So we say one minus two X over five equals zero implies that one minus two X equals zero and X is one half. 
So this is the only solution. X equals one half is the only solution to this. Let's go to the next one. We apply the same principle. It has to be zero or positive. Okay? Can something be zero and less than or equal to negative two? No, 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 no. That's, that doesn't make any sense because zero is even greater than negative two. Okay, can something be positive and still be less than or equal to negative two? No, so this one is no solution. Okay, or you can write it as this. It's an empty set, whichever way you wanna write it. Okay, let's go to number six. Can something be zero or positive and be less than negative two? Mm, no, this cannot be less than negative two and positives can be less than negative two. So it's another empty set situation. Okay, no solution. Let's go here. Can something be zero and or positive and be greater than negative two? Definitely, that's always true. Anything that's zero or anything that's positive is greater than negative two, okay? So everything that you have that comes out of this will be true. So it will be all reals, all real x. We can write it that way, or you can say that x is um, a member of, or you can leave it that way, just say all reals. Let's, let's clean this up and say, that it is from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. You cannot leave out anything because any number you plug in here will always be greater than negative two, okay? Now, or equal to negative two, but we don't need that. We just need the portion that is that satisfies this, okay? Now let's go to this one, the final one. Anything that, this and this are exactly the same. Okay, this one allows us to say, okay, it is equal to negative two, but it cannot be negative two. It has to be strictly greater than negative two. But whatever comes out of here is greater than or equal to negative two. So it satisfies the condition. I know this looks a little different from this because of the equality sign, but it's still, it's not, it doesn't make a difference because whatever comes out of this will make this inequality true. So the same thing here, this is either zero or positive. Just ask yourself, is it always greater than negative two? Yes, so the solution to this is all reals, okay? All reals, all real x. Let's put it that way, all real x. So you can write it in interval notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. You can make up inequalities for yourself like this, put a number there, do something and try to figure out if you can straight away get your answers without you doing any calculations just by using the meaning or the interpretation of inequalities and absolute values. If you got this, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. A very good comment, okay? Don't forget, those who stop learning have stopped living. So never stop learning. Bye-bye.